form on top of strands. Uh, today, what I am going to cover is the immunoglobulin. For sake of convenience, uh, that I have already drawn the figure of immunoglobulin. How to normally the simple immunoglobulin? How it look like? Okay. So here I am going to start with the basic structure of the immunoglobulin. Mainly is having the five things. Uh, it is uh, heavy chains and light chains. Then uh, disulfide bonds. It can be either uh, uh, interchain or interchain. Then uh, in within this heavy and light chains, uh, there will be the constant and the variable region. And then after there is one hinge region. And then are so, there are some domains, which are generally the disulfide bonds. And then after the oligosaccharides. So here, heavy chains and light chains. Uh, first of all, as you can see here in this figure, uh, that uh, this is the central part, which is dark, the uh, black dark. It's uh, the heavy chain, and then after these two parts, for actually one on two on one side, these four parts, these are the light chains. So here, in these heavy chains and light chains, as I told you, there are the constant and the variable regions. So this this is the most part of the heavy chain that this three blocks and this three blocks. These are the which are the constant regions, and then after this two are the variable regions. And same here in light chains, these are the constant regions and these are the variable regions. Now within this then I will tell you that uh, there must uh, there may be the intra or intercellular uh, intra intra or inter chain. Uh, disulfide bonds are there. So here you can see here this all are the interchain, sorry, interchain disulfide bonds. While this two are the interchain disulfide bonds. So here the constant variable regions. Generally, light chains having uh, variable regions. Uh, uh, generally, considering having around 110 amino acids and constant region also in the 110 amino acids while in case of heavy chains uh, its variable region contains around 110 amino acids while its constant region contains uh, around 330 to 440 amino acids so basically I'm, I will be starting with these things uh, so first of all heavy chain and light chain so here as well, all immunoglobulins have the four side four chain structure either basic unit as I told you two heavy chains and two light chains now here they are composed of the identical units heavy chains uh, generally they are having the molecular weight uh, around uh, 50 to 70 kilo dalton by light chain having the 23 kilo dalton so. now next is disulfide bridge as I told you uh, it can be inter or can be intra as I I will show you in structure. The heavy light chains, uh, uh, in this case, um, they are held together by interchain disulfide bonds, which is the non -colloid covalent interaction. There are number of uh, interchain disulfide bonds, varies among different immunoglobulins uh, molecules. Uh, I am going to discuss uh, in further videos that uh, which type of immunoglobulins are there. So based on that, the different immunoglobulins having the different type of uh, not different type of the different number of uh, inter interchain disulfide bonds. While in case of interchain disulfide bonds uh, that I will show you, I have shown you here only. Uh, within each of the polypeptide chain, there are some amount of such bonds are there. And now next uh, is the constant and the variable region. I have already told you that uh, in case of light chains and in case of heavy chains. If I am going for constant regions and variable regions, generally light chain having the 110 amino acids in both, it's approximate 110. While in case of heavy chains, that uh, in case of heavy chains, uh, variable region contains around 110 amino acids, while constant regions may uh, contain 330 to 440 amino acids. Now, next is the hinge region. Hinge region is the region around this. This is the hinge region. It is the connector region, and it is the arm of antibody molecule, uh, which is called the hinge region. And the 
it provides some flexibility to the antibody and next is the domain and uh, it is a simple 2D structure if I am going for the 3D structure of the immunoglobulin there are some globular regions and in those globular regions uh, some interchain disulfide bonds are there and this interchain disulfide bonds uh, they, they are termed as the domains and the, finally the oligosaccharides uh, oligosaccharides as, I, as you can see here this part sometimes uh, with heavy chains or light chains uh, oligosaccharides are attached with them and uh, Generally, carbohydrates are attached to CH2 domain in most of the immunoglobulins and uh, you may find anywhere else also. So this is all about the basic structure of immunoglobulin that how it looks like and uh, what are the parts of the immunoglobulins. And next I am going to show you the, what are the fragments, that how immunoglobulin gets fragment. There are basically two enzymes, one is papain and another one is capsin. Okay, so now first of all with papain. So papain and capsin, uh, papain cleavages and papain capsin cleavage. Basically, when I see that uh, resulting fragment may contain the both antigen binding sites or may contain the single antigen binding site, and based on that that it is FAB or FAB2 so it is the basic difference between papain cleavage and the papsin cleavage in case of uh, papain cleavage the final fragment the final fragment contain only one antigen binding site so you can say it's monomeric while papsin cleavage uh, if the antibody cleaved by the papsin it contains both so you can say this as the dimeric so here it is a basic difference now mainly the papain cleavage uh, generally if I fragment DNA uh, sorry not DNA it's uh, immunoglobulin from here it's a papain cleavage this part is come known as FAB fragment and FC fragment this part is known as FC fragment it is not ABC it's because of that this part can be easily crystallized so it is termed as the FC Okay. Now, what are the, what is the significance of these parts? So, first of all, with F, sorry, here is the FAB, FC. I am going, I am going to cleave by from here. So, this is FAB and this is FC. And uh, now, what are the significance? FAB. This is the part which binds with antibodies. While FC, this part, generally it binds with the cellular receptors and the complement factors so this is all about the immunoglobulins its basic structure and its cleavage thank you for further video please subscribe pharma toppers thank you so much